Okay, folks, this is a heads up, a second uh, video on what Vimeo has to offer. And it also doubles as sort of a notification that episode three of the Pro Life Blasphemy series, I had posted some links to videos that were in Blip TV. Um, those videos are now moved over to Vimeo. Before I go further, I want to show you a little technique that might help you when you're you know, on the internet. As you can see here on this page, the people who um, are hosting Vimeo decided, like so many are today, that the text of on screen should be as close to the same color as the background as possible, making it very hard to read. Fortunately, in most browsers, and I'm using Mozilla Firefox, in most browsers, you can override this, except for Chrome. So if you're on Chrome, you're out of luck. In, in Mozilla Firefox, here's what you do to make the text readable. You go here, you click Options, and in the Content tab, you have a default font you can specify, and I prefer Comic Sans because it's most readable. You can specify the size, and I like 16. Then you have this thing called Advanced. You click on that. And if you were to check this box, that means the fonts that are native to the web page, that's what you'll see. If, on the other hand, you uncheck it like I have, that means your own choice of font, which in my case is Comic Sans, will instead show on the page, making it more readable. Then you have other choices about your fonts in case the web page doesn't specify a particular font, as many do not. So then you just click OK, and that is what you're seeing on screen so far. The font is overridden. OK, but obviously the problem is not the font now, but the colors. So you can do the same thing with colors. First of all, you specify your own default about what colors you want to see or you can specify the system colors for your OS. Okay, if this box is checked here, that allows the pages to choose their own colors instead of my selection. So what you want to do is unselect it. Now watch what happens when I click OK. OK there, OK there. See, now my own colors and my own font colors and now my own fonts are showing. See how much more readable the page is? Okay, now what is this page? First of all, it's the companion to episode three of Pro Life Blasphemy series in YouTube. It's not only going to be about about episode three. I'm going to start sticking. I'm not sure when. It could be months from now. I'm going to start sticking more studies proving that the pro lifers are all blasphemous from the Bible itself. I'm going to start posting them here. Okay, I will make little videos, like 30 second videos, announcing a posting in YouTube. But the actual videos are going to be here because here you get much clearer view of the Hebrew and Greek text. Vimeo is a much better site for showing the kind of textual exegesis videos I specialize in. So, since there are 500 freaking verses to cover, it's going to take me years. Okay, who knows if God's going to let me live that long. I'm going to furnish the proof in Bible. The Bible's focus is not like the pro-lifers. The pro-lifers are extremely childish. They are extremely apostate. They are going to Caesar. They are politicking to Caesar to change the law on abortion. Well, honey, you have higher rights than that. If you really feel abortion is wrong, then pray to God about it. Go to the Supreme Court of Heaven for crying out loud. Politicking to Caesar is just going to cost you time and money and angst, and it's anti-biblical to start with. But pretend you don't know that yet. You're acting according to your conscience. You think abortion is wrong. Okay, fine. Then you don't go to Caesar. What did God say? What did Christ say? You can ask anything in my name. Okay, then pray to God about your position on abortion. And if you're wrong on it, God will just say no. 
If you're right on it, he'll listen and he'll do something about it. Okay? And if you're wrong, he'll show you why you're wrong. That's one of the purposes of my doing videos, is just to put it out there, to let people study the matter when they're ready for it on their own. Because Christendom is not covering this topic. It's really criminal. Christendom is covering up this topic. And it's extremely important. Now I'm going to go through the first paragraph of this to say why. You know, so much disinformation, that's just sort of preamble, okay? Look at this. The upshot is that God says he and no one else makes you a you. Okay? The real you is your soul. You are not evolved because you're not biological. You cannot be evolved. Because the person that's you is the soul God created. Pattern of Genesis 2-7 when he created Adam. First he created the body, then it's all formed and just there. And then what does he do? He breathes life, it's plural in Hebrew, lives, and Adam became a living soul. Not until then. That's why you're not evolved. That's why there's no soul life in the womb. And look, if there were soul life in the womb, look at that blue text while I cut the phone. Sorry, I get a lot of telemarketing calls. Okay, look, God is not a murderer or a sadist. God is not going to impute a soul to a body exiting the womb unless it can sustain a soul. See, a body can come out of the womb because it aborts. A body can come out of the womb and be too deformed. A body can come out of the womb in a certain cir circumstance. God foreknows what that's going to be. All right? At the same time, he's the God of freedom, and he lets the biological material do whatever it's going to do. And then it's a juridical fairness issue. Should God put a soul in that body or not? Okay, because God is, is basically, you know, going to be to blame if he makes the wrong decision. All right. And he doesn't want a soul to not be free. So he has, he, he waits for the free, pro, you know, production of the body to have its free results, even though he foreknows it. And then he himself decides, okay, am I, am I going to create a soul and put it in that body or not? Now, that really is important for you to know. Okay, the body you got, God chose for you. The parents you got, God chose for you. Maybe your parents didn't really want you. Maybe you don't really want your parents. But God wanted them. Now, why did God want that? I mean, I don't know. We all have problems with our parents, and we all have things about our parents that we're really, you know, grateful to God for. Okay, so why did God make that choice? God made the choice. God is sovereign. Every single Calvinist on the planet says God is sovereign. So why are the Calvinists not understanding that there's no soul life in the womb? It's a juridical issue. Right there highlighted in light blue. If the body exiting the womb cannot sustain a soul, God will not create one. Because that creates you as human. Not until. Pattern of Genesis 2, 7. Go read it yourself even in translation. The only thing the translation gets wrong is the number of lives. It's plural in Hebrew. Because Adam was a spiritual life as well as a soul life. God is not a murderer or a sadist, okay? He's not. If soul life were in the womb, you'd be aware of it. And you'd be in pain. And you'd be trapped. And you'd feel all the horror. The pro-lifers just aren't thinking clearly, okay? I'm sorry. All right? God would never do this. He would never put a soul in the womb. And every Jew knows that. Every Jew knows you're not human until you're born. Now, does that mean you should run out and get an abortion? No. Because why? You don't know if God would choose that fetus to have a soul. So you wait. Now, maybe there are circumstances where you shouldn't wait. 
for example, if the mother's life is threatened, mother's already alive, the fetus is not alive. The mother's life takes precedence over the fetus, and the Bible even says that in Exodus 21 22, because that's where that juridical issue came up. And I'll be covering that, that verse in later videos in the series. But do you see the point? God's authorship of your life. And his love of your life is a point. Not whether abortion should be allowed in the law. For crying out loud, people. Let's get our, our minds out of the gutter. People are making an, an issue of abortion because they're all jealous some girl had fun. And, and she can get away with it by having an abortion. That's childish thinking, honey. First of all, no woman ever wants an abortion when she's pregnant. She doesn't want that. There's an immediate maternal instinct that takes over. And, you, and, you, and you, you're, you're thrilled about the idea of having a kid. There's not a single woman on this planet who's ever been pregnant who didn't have that attitude. So no woman wants an abortion. So let's stop being children and start looking at the adult word of God. So that's what my videos are about. And again, you know, I'm adopted. See, right here I said that in episode 1A of the series. I'm adopted. I don't favor abortion. But it's not murder. And if you think it is, your spiritual life is, you're, you're carnal. Your spiritual life is gone. You need one John 1 John 1.9 and you really need to talk to God about this. And I didn't mean this to turn into a harangue. I meant to show you that here in Vimeo, you can create what's called an album, which is what this is. Okay, I've created several albums so far. You can create an album, and then the album has this uh, capability of a long video description, and then you've got a bunch of videos you can just stick in it. Very simple. Okay. Sorry about the harangue part. And the other objective was to show you that you can change the colors in Mozilla Firefox by Tools, Options, and then Advanced. And then you click this to allow pages to choose their own fonts. Or you unclick it to use your own instead. Okay. Colors, it's the same thing. You click this to allow pages to use their own colors. Or you unclick it to use yours instead. Okay. Sorry about the harangue. End of video.